Hello, everyone. Welcome to another awesome day of FileMaker training. I'm Richard Carlton, creator of FMTrain.tv, where every day, especially Wednesday today, every day is a great day to learn about the Claris FileMaker platform. And so today we have uh, our first victim on the show. This is Rick Kalman. Rick Kalman has held a lot of hats at Claris. He, are you like the chief evangelist now? Is that what your title is? It's, that's not my, uh, it's just the platform evangelist, uh, primarily platform. focusing on, on FileMaker, but. So you're you're only allowed to tell us the good things and not the bad things about the platform. Is that is that the way that works? I tell you the truth about it. Ooh, that's going to get you in trouble at headquarters. <laughs> so Rick is here today because well, let me just let me just tee this up. Rick, why are you here and why should we care? I am here because this morning we did release uh, some updates for FileMaker Pro and FileMaker Go. And if you were here last week uh, on this day, I came on and talked about the two server updates we did, um, FileMaker Server 22.02 and 21.16, with some security updates and some other in-market fixes. Uh, and so uh, since we released again today, I'm here to talk about it. Cool. Yeah. So last week were some server updates. I think there's some really important server updates in there. Once again, I would not just arbitrarily do it. I would make sure that you find who your server administrator is person <laughs> and coordinate with them on the update just because you don't want to run an update and have it uh, break your server on you. And I'm not saying it will. I'm just saying in general, if you have a mission critical business application, be thoughtful about it. However, there are some important bug fixes in there, including some internet security vulnerabilities like the big ones that people talk about. Those were patched in there. So it's an important patch to have. That was last week. Claris doesn't always give us all the product updates on one pass. They're giving it to us when they have them completed. So today is the day when Pro and Go are completed, right? Yes. Cool. All right. So what do we have in these updates? So uh, I'll, I'll give you the, the highlights of the things that, that will stand out um, again. So this is the first update of uh, FileMaker Pro 2025, uh, also known as 22.0.2. <laughs> we're also updating FileMaker Go, but we're also updating FileMaker Pro uh, 21.1.2. And the reason we're doing both of those has to do with probably the, the thing that has irritated folks the most is with this release, you will be able to install multiple versions of FileMaker Pro on Windows again. Um, that was a side effect of using our Sparkle uh, update delivery system to now also deliver major releases. And that was sort of an unintended consequence. So um, by installing FileMaker, um, 22.0.2, the latest update to FileMaker 2025. Um, and uh, if you're still running 21 and you want them to mix on a machine, running the updater for FileMaker Pro 21.1.2, you will now, again, be able to have multiple versions on, on the same machine. Uh, and it'll it'll make it easier also for um, um, server admins, um, or, not, or excuse me, IS admins to to administer the update without having to go around and touch every desktop and that sort of thing. So that's probably the biggest one, but there, it, we're also addressing other in-market issues. For instance, uh, some of the things that we've seen since we launched, and we certainly see them on the community, is conditional formatting um, when there was empty values and with placeholder text. Um, it was doing some wonky things there, so we addressed that. Um, uh, we have a, had a couple of... Um, new uh, scripts that uh, could lead to crashes that we fix those one is with the um, uh, generate response from model sometimes would quit unexpectedly um, when you were streaming um, and, and performing a javascript um, web viewer um, with that option turned on so that was a crash and then there was a, uh, a a crash when you had we're using go to list of record script step um, uh, when you provided a list and it had strings that had values um, in certain positions that could cause it to crash. So we addressed those. Mm -hmm. um, there was an irritating issue with um, in-product notifications coming up every time you launched FileMaker Pro. We knocked that one down. FileMaker. I, I saw that one. I was like, yeah, what the yes. hell? Yes, no, that happened. I just got a, it just popped up on our company Slack hilariously. I will go tell Christian to update to FileMaker 22.0.2. <laughs> and um, just for Go, um, essentially, it's just some cleanup. Um, the help and the registration URLs were pointing to the 
to the old version. So now it points to the, to the new version. Um, and then, like I said, FileMaker Pro 21.1.2 is just necessary in order to be, have them coexist on the same Windows machine. The release notes go into pretty sig uh, significant details on those because there's a, a, a lot of uh, uh, details um, there as well. Um, uh, for the FileMaker Pro 21.1, um, it related to the Sparkle updater. Um, there was this thing where it would display a blank release notes, and and uh, a number of the option buttons there were, you know, were were, were wonky as well. Um, and, and when you were trying to, you know, say never check for updates, and so we fixed that as well on that side. So that's, those good. are the highlights. Yeah, yeah, and and the and a lot of this has been very welcome, but the biggest one that's in fact it burned me yesterday because I was here updating a Windows computer and it said you'd like to install FileMaker 22. You're gonna have to uninstall every other copy of FileMaker ever. So I had to uninstall four copies of FileMaker to get 22 installed. Now, if I'd waited a whole day, I would be <laughs> able to do that and it preserved my old copy. So, um, yeah, so it's it's a good thing. Did, with did you pay attention to my product, uh, my uh, partner announcement on Friday? No, Maybe he, you were lying he around. He was having a bad day yesterday. I was considering <laughs> reminding him, but I was just like, you know. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, I was head down and going 100 miles an hour. I'm like, ah, I can't believe it. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah. Anyway, so cool. Well, uh, that's a good update. So, Claris continues to update its product plans. Um, let's see. Anything else you want to tell us, Rick, before we, you know, because so 22, it's 2020. Five. The version number is twenty-two, and uh, we're at twenty-two oh two. And you can go back and mix and match back to twenty-one. So pro to server, server to pro. One version there, right? Important yep, yep. to remember that. Sometimes it's two year, two versions, but this right now it's one version. Um, what else? Anything else? Anything yeah, else? I do have one more thing. Now that you're reminding me is. Even though I will be on vacation and not here next week, um, we do anticipate, but I'm not 100% sure, um, FileMaker Cloud 2025 should be coming out next week. Um, mm. The only thing I'm saying 100% not sure is we would push it out on a Thursday, but we have Labor Day coming up. Um, we have people in EMEA um, uh, who may still be uh, away and on vacation. And when we update, FileMaker um, Cloud, there um, it changes the versions that are supported. So we don't want people's not be there, and then there's a change underneath them, and then they've got angry customers. So we may end up pushing that out after Labor Day. Not sure yet. We're still trying to talk about now, it. Now, let me ask a technical question about this and if, see if you know the answer to this. My understanding historically has been that FileMaker Claris would not push out a FileMaker, a FileMaker Cloud update unless like 80% of the users are using or 90% were using a compatible version of a client like Pro or Go. Do you remember anything about that? Because I do remember uh, that, but I don't have any details on the, the, the numbers uh, this time around. But it is something we have to take into consideration um, because um, we support you know the, the two versions. But as you update the version, those two versions change. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Um, and what we don't want is someone using an older version and all of a sudden it doesn't work. Right. Um, on the client side, obviously. Um, yeah. 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 So uh, yeah. so we'll send out a, a, a notice to people. So it could be that it comes right after Labor Day rather than before. Probably the prudent thing is not to do it before Labor Day, before a three day weekend. And you do it on a Thursday. Um, but but we'll see. Sometimes these things just take on a life of their own and, and it already wants to come out. Right, <laughs> right, right. right. Well, I, I'm frequently reminded that I am not in charge and neither are you, Rick Kelman. We are both at the bottom of the food chain. So we are just here uh, trying to herd, herd the cats as we go. So yeah, so ideally you never have a major product launch right before everyone goes on vacation. I have a rule about that with engineers, no big customer launches. And then the next day they go on vacation because things promptly melt and explode. If you're a FileMaker developer, you know this to be true. If you're not a FileMaker developer, you have no idea what I'm talking about, but take it from me. So uh, good, good. So then that's cloud. And then I think uh, engineer Margaret was engineering going to come on the show and talk about that a little bit. Yes. Uh, but it's to be determined. Yes. Okay, great. We'll leave it like that. Margaret's being deliberately vague and evasive, <laughs> which means that she doesn't want to commit to stuff on live TV, which is totally great. 
<laughs> Back in the day, Rich, we called that being coy. Coy, that's right, coy. Cool. All right. Well, Rick, that's it for uh, the mission. It's very exciting. Um, do, you, do you have any announcements on the next major release? I'm, I'm just messing with Rick. Like the next version of FileMaker, like the next major release is like, you know, like way out, right? I'm assuming. The next, well, it depends what you mean by it. The, the next significant release will probably be 22.1. Uh, mm -hmm. and, that, and, and that yep will come Probably after after Apple uh, you know releases the new operating systems. Um, oh, and, good. Yeah. Okay, real quick. Yeah. Historically, ta tell us about this because I'm going to have five thousand people are going to promptly download Tahoe on their Mac, and it's going to explode. Then they're going to go, I can't believe Claris is the same company as Apple. Blah blah blah. Right. So, no, as soon as the the builds are available and they've been all summer, we are always testing with them and communicating back with Apple if there are any um, uh, impacts uh, to FileMaker. Luckily for us, uh, we're on the do not break um, list, but you know, it doesn't mean that Apple doesn't sometimes have to break something that we have to fix because they have a business to to move forward as well. But um, yeah, um, but we um, we typically would do our first major enhancement to the major release um, after Apple does that to make sure that we're compatible so we're not cranking out releases too often, right? Um, we can only absorb so, so them so, so so much and it just becomes burdensome. So. so what Rick said for everyone is that when Tahoe comes out, please just like resist the urge to click the update button. Just stand fast. Just stand fast. Give Claris two, three weeks, whatever, four weeks, whatever it takes in that time frame for them to verify, validate, and say, yeah, you're good to go on the installation. Or they'll have an update that fixes it. Something well, like that. And, and we'll typically, when when it drops, we'll, yeah, we'll have an, uh, a KB article. We'll put things on the community, letting people know, hey, you know, w w we should run. We're, we're not aware of any issues. Or, you know, there, you know it'll be a couple of weeks for uh, there's complete compatibility. We'll let you know what the issues are. That's what we typically do. But the last couple of releases have been pretty good so yeah yeah just uh just remember just to resist the urge to press that button with your mouse if you have your mouse and you want to click it you know just hold back on that just hold fire that'd be great all right yeah, and, the, and the last thing i'd say about that rich is remember that sometimes um you can do updates we could be compatible it doesn't necessarily mean all of the plugins that you're using are also compatible because your plugin vendor sometimes has to do something as well so just keep that in mind that it's not just us um but if you're using third-party plugins um, um you need to be aware of those as well absolutely although i think if we told christian schmidt he was not going to be compatible he would be offended his german sense of humor would be offended his german <laughs> sense of honor um so yes uh he is the most uh, ruthless updater i've ever met in my life so <laughs> someone's saying that the update isn't available here in switzerland is there any is europe on like a sl slower release or do i just need to send them the link to the correct spot it it uh it may I, I don't know what we pushed it out at nine. So before mm -hmm. nine this morning in the U S it, I don't know what the uh, site, it may take, you know, several hours for it to propagate across the entire world. Um, but if by um, later this evening, tomorrow morning, it's still not there, then just, just ping us. And, uh, but it should be, um, it, it just doesn't push out all worldwide. Got it. At once. There you go. I will also link the release notes to you people. All right, cool. All right, good, good. Well, Rick, thanks for coming on the show. Give us the information. We're going to take this video, push it out to the uh, to the internet, make sure everyone gets it so they know that the latest updates are available. Mm -hmm.